Hey guys, Jerupter here, and we're coming to you with a semi-unordinary video for this channel. But uh, yesterday, uh, CIG released a wonderful clip on their uh, single-player version of Star Citizen, which is Squadron 42. And during this pretty much an hour of gameplay, we got to see some absolutely amazing stuff that got me so excited for what may be in the future that I decided to make a video on it because I wanted to point out some interesting keynotes throughout it and I thought it'd be awesome. Uh, a side note, I'm not currently home right now so my mic quality may be a little subpar to what I usually have because I'm using a headset, um, but I think it'll be fine so I'm gonna go through with it. Now, during this hour of gameplay, we got to see a phenomenal amount of things, which I'm not really going to go into detail with, because there's two specific things that I want to cover. Um, some things that I'm not going to be including is how flippin' awesome the inside of a capital slash large ship is, uh, such as the Idris. Um, it, it was an amazing detailed tour through the inside of the ship, and that's one of the main reasons I like Star Citizen, the, the vehicles. Uh, now, the, the main thing we're looking at here is the environment that they were in. And more specifically, what we're coming up right now in the video is the coil, which I have to start out by saying is a phenomenal idea in a sci-fi universe. What what the coil is, because I had to look it up, is a the remnants of a planet. This is a dead planet, and it's formed what they call the Odin Cluster Alpha, which is nicknamed the coil because of the electrical currents that flow through it. And they, they did give an actual reason for the electricity, because I, I was kind of peeved that space lightning was happening. Uh, their excuse for it was, Core's iron-rich content coming into contact with cast-off stellar remnants, um, causing arc charges. So, these are called energy storms, which is also fucking amazing, because that, that's an, an amazing thing to have in a game. Because when you're going through a place, you want hazards. You don't want it to just be like, oh, you go, you pick something up, and you go. You want to go in, and you want to have some danger. You want to have some risk to your effort. And um, it increases how much this game can be phenomenally. Um, the fact that I, I did read the Odin system log when they, they had a lore video about it a while ago. And to see it actually coming into fruition here is surprising. <laughs> Because when you read it, it seems impossible. It, it, it's something out of a book, right? But they made it here. <laughs> and it, it's, a, it's a visual representation of where it can go. And all the fun that can be had, most importantly. Looking at it as well, they stuck full-heartedly to the lore they created with it. They didn't cut any corners with it. Um, in their description of the Odin Cluster, they made it seem like this impossible astronomical anomaly. And that's what they created in the game. And that's important because it, it shows a, a degree of dedication and no cop-outs. The game might take 20 years to make. Um, that's an exaggeration, by the way. But we're, we're getting something from it, you know? Um, so in, in their further description of that, they, they give a lot of potential gameplay options for this. Since the coil is so frickin' dangerous because there's, quote, electrical doom storms, unquote, um, there is phenomenal amount of resources that can be harvested from it from people that don't want to go into giant, quote, electrical doom storms, which leaves a huge amount for the player to go in. If they're willing to brave a giant uh, magnetic-induced electrical storm, they can get rich, of course, but they can have their ship explode, <laughs> which makes for exciting gameplay, which is important. Um, it also leaves this sense of wonder. When you're going into a place that looks like this, and then you're coming out of it with salvage, you're coming out with valuable metals, you feel like you've done something that day if you went inside of a broken planet and extracted riches. That, that's an experience that I've been looking for in a game for a really long time, and I'm hoping this one was going to be able to deliver it, and it's looking that way. Which excites me, it, it makes me happy, and um, it makes me scared that maybe they'll mess up somewhere along the way. But so far they're doing pretty good. Now another thing worth mentioning is that they've created a place for more than just one type of person. One, they have the miner, there's resources everywhere. They have a salvager, there's ships that exploded from giant electrical arcs of doom. Uh, and that's awesome, by the way. But uh, then there's also, as mentioned in 
in their lower posts, a lot of illegal people hide here because law enforcement don't want to follow them into an exploded planet. So you have a place for bounty hunters, people who want to be in ship combat. There's also the Explorer, which this seems like a dream for an Explorer, to go into a place where no one else wants to go and discover places that other places need to know about, like mineral caches or safe places in the storms, as mentioned again in the lower posts, which are really valuable to mining companies because they need to know where it's safe to set up shop. Now as well, there's icing on the cake to this, right? Before this planet exploded, it had a moon, and it was a gaseous, smog planet-ish moon. And I was looking at it, and I'm seeing this coil here, I'm like, that's from the Odin system, it had a moon, but I'm okay if it doesn't exist. But no, they made it, and they modeled out a smog planet that acts as a space junkyard. That is amazing! <laughs> oh, it makes me so happy. And um, more importantly, I want to link this back to the content on my channel. With our new series doing this, this opens up a playground to make cool stuff for you guys. Um, and that's really what's important when we're doing games. We play Arma 3 because it's a sandbox. You can do your imagination in it to make cool stuff. It looks like Star Citizen is going to let me do that as well. And I love that. <laughs> but... Um, these two things are both environmental areas. And as they make more of these environmental areas, you can implement different parts of it. Pirates, um, resource mining, salvage, um, all the topics I was talking about before. Um, but the environments are really important <laughs> to not let you get stale. If you keep going to a place and every planet's this giant piece of rock, then you're done with the game. But if you come and you see this giant planet surrounded by a poisonous gas and pretty much turned into a space junkyard, and then right next to it you find that it's orbiting a dead planet that exploded and has electrical swarms and storms sorry, um, going through it, and then you find out that there, there's like political unrest and outlaws everywhere, and they have to call in the military to protect these stations, and then you have battles going on, and then you have slaver camps down on this junkyard. It, it's too much. But that's amazing! Now, I don't want to keep dragging on and on with just the fact that I'm amazed by this. I'm, I'm really impressed by the innovation that they're going through with a video game. This is stuff that is going to hopefully make um, the future in video gaming a lot more fun and a lot more interesting and um, it's awesome now I, I don't want to keep going long-winded on this again so uh, I'm gonna start to wrap this up but I'm really excited where this game is going and I'm happy that I'm semi part of the community of course I'm not a Star Citizen information channel uh, there's plenty of people that are better at me that are better than me at it uh, currently so um, I'll leave it to them to talk about this stuff, but I just wanted to share my excitement and the idea circulating in my head about this idea because it, it's awesome, which I guess is the, the moral of this message, and I can't wait to see more of it. Uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I hope you guys have a wonderful holiday season because Christmas is coming up and all those wonderful fun days. If you celebrate it or not, it's just a great time of year. Um, have a good one, guys. And I'll see you in the verse.